This is the Short-Term Rental Opportunity with Revity, where we educate sophisticated investors on the power of this high-quality investment asset class. Hi, I'm Liz Marie, and welcome to the Short-Term Rental Opportunity with Revity, the industry leader in underwriting short-term rentals as an investment asset. So at Revity, we're all about all things short-term rentals, and we're really looking at them as a high-performing investment asset, underwriting each property uh, individually and getting that very specific view of its true investment potential. Um, and through that, we're also helping investors, lenders, all sorts of counterparties throughout the industry to understand the true potential of the asset even better. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm Liz, I'm our Chief Product Officer of Capital Markets, and I'm really responsible for understanding the data and how that affects all the different services and products that we offer. I've been in the financial services and alternative investments for at least 15 years now, and really uh, excited to understand and help people understand the potential in this space as a short-term rental investor myself. Um, Seth Lowry, I'm the Chief Investment Officer for Revity. Uh, my background is financial services. Uh, I worked on Wall Street and helped raise capital for a number of companies and real estate uh, included. Here at Revity, I'm helping to connect the dots between funds and institutional scale capital to the STR space and really trying to uh, bring forth short-term rentals as an investment class. Um, that, that, that's ready for large scale institutional investment, as well as any portfolio scale acquirer out there. And that's really why we started this podcast as we're talking to uh, all of these different investors, um, vacation rental managers, lenders, really everyone throughout the space. We're recognizing this huge need for education and understanding it not just as a real estate asset, but a true unique investment asset class with its own characteristics, um, risk and return profile, um, which we'll touch on a bit more in this first episode. Yeah, so jumping right into the topic for today, um, you know, why STRs? What is the opportunity? Um, it's really a fascinating emerging investment asset class. The size of this niche market is is just huge. Um, it depends on who you ask, but uh, you know, according to, to some estimates, I think on the conservative side, there's at least 1.5 million short term rentals out there, on up to several million. Um, again, depending on data source, if you assume each house is worth, you know, half a million dollars on average, you're talking about nearly a trillion dollar asset class. To me, that doesn't scream niche. It, it's kind of the largest niche I've ever heard of and, and frankly, larger than most regular asset classes. So just kind of fascinating to see that dynamic. It's historically been kind of a mom and pop cottage industry. Um, you know, it, it's challenging to get scale capital into the space. Um, but, you know, we think that's changing. There's been some uh, expeditions, if you will, by, by a handful of sophisticated investors. Um, but in some, you know, I think from the institutional side, I think you're talking somewhere around the several billion dollar investment mark, which compared to this trillion dollar asset class, I mean, it's 0.05% or less of the total market has been institutionalized. So, Inning zero for the institutional playbook, even though, you know, mom and pops have been ahead and, and have been owning these and managing these short term rentals for the vast majority of, of the sector's history. Um, why are they coming? The, the answer is easy. 30 to 40 percent more cash flow. Um, everyone, everyone likes cash flow. It's, it's uh, you know, the most competitive yield uh, out of any kind of uh, residential asset. Um, and, and, you know, with that, you also get growth. There's been tremendous, a tremendous amount of pricing growth in this, in the sector. And, uh, you know, we think longer term has a lot more room to run. So you get higher cash flow, higher growth. Um, you're always going to get some interest. And one of the other things that we like to harp on here at Revity is there's some very unique risk mitigation characteristics mm -hmm. of these assets, you know, in most economic phases, you're talking about some level of inflation, you know, housing assets are real assets. They perform extraordinarily well in times of inflation. Uh, so, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. So as inflation increases, so does the value of the STR um, on top of that higher cash flow. So 
we'll get into the risks, which are its own topic in a, in a later pod and, um, you know, kind of address the main concerns as well as some of the maybe more esoteric or interesting aspects of risks and STRs, um, but definitely deserves its own topic. Um, so I'll turn it over to Liz, who also heads up our data strategy and a lot of our underwriting. Um, you know, what, uh, what kind of returns are we talking about? Sure. So first, I want to add to your point about where we're at and kind of the inning of, uh, of the space. And, you know, it's really like pregame is how we like to think about it, um, because of those, you know, 1.5 million, let's say, SDRs, only a tiny percentage are being operated as what we call investment grade and seeing the types of um, returns that we truly believe are the ultimate potential of the asset. Um, and that we're looking at like seven to 10% returns at scale on an individual asset level or even a smaller portfolio. You know, we're seeing 20% cap rates uh, in quite a few areas. That's not abnormal to come across our desk as we're underwriting. And there are um, quite a few operators running at that scale, but by and large, the, the majority of the space is not there yet. And so there's just tremendous opportunity. Um, you're thinking mom and pops, second homeowners, um, there's just so much opportunity to optimize. And so we really like to talk about this as an investment grade asset. When you're looking at an investment grade uh, short-term rental, what are those characteristics? And again, that's a whole topic that we'll dive into uh, on a future episode, but that's things like, is it being managed by a professional property manager? Uh, you'll see a huge outperformance even above and beyond the management fee when you're using one of those highest quality operators. Uh, are you taking into account owner stay? So if it's being operated as a second home, that's a tremendous uh, amount of the of the total occupancy that's factored in and, and really taken out of the equation for an investor. Uh, and that's why you're you're not really seeing that true investment potential if it's just you know something you rent out a couple times a year. Uh, so there, there are several characteristics that we've defined, and that's how we're underwriting these properties, looking at their true investment grade uh, cash flows when they're operated with these high standards. So maybe at a more higher level, how does this investment in, a, in an STR as an investment class compare to maybe other investments like stocks or bonds? Sure. Yeah. So um, we like to think of the uh, the high upside and, you know, asymmetric kind of downside. You're not having uh, it's backed by real estate asset. So uh, just like, you know, any other real estate asset, you have that actual collateral um, that kind of is limiting the downside. You're, you're not going to zero. You always have that asset. Um, but at the same time, you have the, the cash flow from the rents that are really outperforming, certainly the long term. Um, and many other real estate sectors. And the, those are not the same as just a housing asset because it's, it's a hospitality business on top of this real estate asset. Um, so they behave differently, um, certainly higher, higher yielding. Um, and then when you want to dive into, get a little deeper into the inflationary uh, characteristics, um, it gets really attractive. So what are your thoughts on that, Seth? Yeah, so, you know, I think, Everyone has uh, gotten schooled this year on inflation. It can wreak havoc on, havoc on certain asset prices. Um, you know, this year alone, stocks and bonds are both down on inflation concerns at a level. Uh, I think recently we just broke through the worst period of total yeah. wealth return in the past hundred years in the U.S. because both stocks and bonds are, went down at the same time. So I think that illustrates, you know, with inflationary times, which might persist for for a couple of years here uh you know what are what are a safe haven from inflation what assets are protected and again it comes back to these real assets and it's the the house value is strong collateral that will rise with inflation that is a very compelling risk uh mitigation for for an str on top of that you know comparatively if you think about the cash flow natures of an str they were priced daily or, or weekly or, or quite often so the cash flows you get they're not fixed they're more like a floating security which if you think for all our finance and investment nerds out there the the value between a floating rate and a fixed coupon bond those typically behave very differently in an inflationary environments. So you kind of get a double barrel benefit with STRs of one strong real asset collateral that rises with inflation as well as repricing cash flows on, on a much more frequent basis. Um, so given the concerns of the market right now, what does the SDR market look like? 
So it's, uh, it, it's certainly strange times from a macroeconomic kind of top down uh, for any, any market or asset class right now, but STR sp uh, specifically. You've kind of, you were witnessing blockbuster growth on both the supply side and the demand side, both up in the mid 20s, more or less. Uh, I think that's reflective of, a, of an economic environment that has shifted from goods back to services. Um, you know, I think the lockdowns obviously created some pent up travel demand. The consumer is in decent shape. And, you know, I think if you look at the hotel forecasts or anything from the hospitality sector, there's a lot of life. There's some legs. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think demand is falling off the cliff. One of the more interesting setups, though, and, and especially with with Liz, you, you and I conversations with lenders over the past few months, it's getting challenging to finance uh, home assets. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, <laughs> homes are predominantly <laughs> debt funded uh, assets, you know, 70, 80 percent LTV. So if you take away that liquidity pipeline, it gets harder, much, much harder to finance homes especially for short-term rentals, which are non-conforming private lending mm -hmm. uh, services. So I'm actually fairly uh, fairly bearish, if you will, on the availability of financing for STRs. I think that's going to potentially slow down the supply of new STRs entering the market. On the other hand, there's a new thesis thinking that, well, if the economy gets tough, more people are, people are gonna list their homes or STRs on, uh, you know, any platform. I think that's also true, but it's kind of creating a bifurcation in the market. I think there's a lot of new supply that um, is maybe taking an amateurish approach. They're not mm -hmm. optimizing the asset totally. Uh, and I think there's more and more investment grade uh, style uh, operators out there looking to harvest maximum yield from STRs. So I think, you know, like anything right now, you can't just look at the headline numbers. There's a ton of different micro dynamics going on within the asset class. In general, you know, I'm pretty optimistic on, on STRs. I think longer term, it's a great value proposition to travelers. Um, they're like a mix of hospitality and, and, and hotels mixed with how does one or a group of people value traveling together, eating a meal together, what are the savings of eating? All of these rays, the value that people are willing to pay for an STRs. And I, I think that's a very long process with a high ceiling that's going to create a lot of pricing power in the industry, which for investors, that's always a good thing, growth and pricing power. Um, so with all that, uh, all that is kind of setting the table. Liz, what are the different kinds of investment strategies you've seen that, that sure. investors are pursuing right now? Yeah, so um, you can get really creative in this space, which is exciting. So, you know, the, the starting point is kind of the the plain old vanilla uh, short-term rental fund, which is, you know, just a standard uh, short-term rental. You can diversify um, across geographic location, seasonality, that type of thing. And, and that's what a lot of uh, investors look at first. Um, but we're thinking about, you know, what are the unique opportunities? And so one of them, as, as you're saying, you know, we're starting to see the, the markets turn and uh, we anticipate there may be an uptick in defaults and th this distressed opportunity um, through non-performing loans is really interesting. Uh, looking at what that supply is and uh, can you convert and you pick up a, an asset for a fraction of the cost and then really juice your returns on the other side. Um, so distress being the first one that's really catching our eye right now, especially as we build out these uh, lender relationships and, and learn more about the landscape um, right now in the space. The second is a high optimization or even what we like to call sometimes the unicorn fund. So uh, when you're really looking at the outperformance of assets, there's uh, several characteristics. So the, the biggest piece of optimization being the management and that's price optimization, channel distribution, um, again, to the point of using a high quality professional manager and then even managing the manager. Um, but the other piece of it is optimizing it from a design and amenity standpoint and having a really clear strategy, just like you'd have a business strategy because this is a business. Who's our target audience? What are they going to look for? What um, amenities, features, design characteristics are going to really wow them and uh, demand a premium? And so uh, we have many clients who've really exemplified that with their portfolios. Um, and that's a really compelling approach. Uh, harder to execute at scale, but certainly for, um, you know, portfolio investors 
can uh, really grab some some outsized returns. Um, the next piece is we're we're collaborating with different marketplaces, um, certainly on like the exploring the LTR to SCR conversion, um, and really exploring unique sources of assets. And so um, one of those uh, strategies is to look at an overall portfolio and examine which uh, assets in this portfolio can be converted. Um, can we kind of slide back and forth? Is there that duality that um, gets you that a little bit of upside from the STR, um, but maybe feels a little safer um, on the LTR sh side? And what markets are best for that? And, and how can we um, support that conversion? And then the, the final piece that's really interesting is looking at tax advantage strategies. Um, for example, a DST or Delaware Statutory Trust um, is one of the, the vehicles that we're exploring uh, as a really compelling way for um, different investors, uh, whether that's on uh, through a broker dealer uh, or an RIA to, to put their capital into these assets um, in a, a fund and not have to manage or you know, own it themselves. Uh, but they get the the benefits of a 1031 exchange if they're you know moving from another asset and get that tax deferred status. So that's extremely compelling um, for investors. Any tax advantage strategy, and um, combining that with the the return profile that we're seeing in STRs is really really interesting. So it sounds like there's a lot of different strategies, um, and mainly you can't just buy a house and hire a VRM and and forget about your. <laughs> There's a lot of dynamic yeah. things going on and, and a lot of different strategies with these assets. I, I think you can slice and dice your investment strategy in, in a number of different ways uh, that, that we just highlighted in addition to the standard geography and size. And, and um, yeah, it, it's a really interesting space. That there, there's tons of ways to deploy capital. Um, and, and yeah, we're looking to uh, explain a lot of these strategies in more detail in, in future podcasts. Um, I think our next topic is going to help help define what investment grade means in our eyes. And, and you know, there's a certain list of criteria that we think are, are just crucial to pay attention to and to optimize to lower the risk and maximize the return of these assets. And that's really the the just of investment grade. It's uh, you know, we like to think of it like a ratings agency. It's how do you maximize your return per unit of risk? Um, and, and so really excited to delve into that at a future topic. And, and uh, yeah, for now, uh, you can learn more about us and everything that we do at Revity.com. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yep. Take care.